What's up guys and welcome back to part 26 of this Mercedes minibus camperman conversion. So if you're new to the series I'll put a link up in the top corner going across to the playlist of the entire build conversion of this vehicle starting from when I first bought it stripping it all the way down to the bare chassis and then building it up to as you see now which is an almost fully converted camper van. So if you haven't seen them before just have a look in the top corner and there'll be a link going off to the playlist to get you fully caught up with fully up to date with where we are now. So in today's episode it's slightly annoying day for me today. I was actually hoping to get the seats fitted in. Been waiting all week for these seats to arrive. There's some BMW seats I ordered on eBay. They arrived yesterday. I was going to have a look at trying to get them fitted in. I've even got a FASP swivel base there ready to go. And when I've had a look the eBay seller has, I don't know why, but for some reason he's removed the seat control module units from each seat. So now the seats are totally useless for me, but there was no mention of that in the listing at all. They were just listed as good condition, fully working. And obviously without the control modules, nothing works on the seat because there's no way of getting power from the input across to the uh, controls on the side of the seat. So while I'm currently in an eBay dispute with this seller and looking for another set of seats, I'm instead going to be cracking on with some of the upholstery for the rear of the conversion. I've got a quite a thick memory foam mattress in the house that I'm going to get out in, this, uh, in a second and start cutting it down. I'm going to be doing a number of different cushions for this U-shaped sofa bed just so they're all going to be easily removable to get into the storage underneath each of the sections. So there'll be a section going across there, another section going across this part, a third section going across there and then there's going to be two cushions that will sit in this gap area. And then when it's in the sofa bed, these cushions can be taken out and used as backrests along either side of the sofa as well. Once the mattress is fully out and cut down to shape, I'm going to then get my sewing machine out, do all the upholstery myself as well. So I'm going to have to nip out to the shops and get some upholstery materials. I've still got some bits already in stock. Other bits I'm going to have to nip out and get now as well. But, as I say, instead of fitting in the seats that I was hoping to do today, Instead, we should hopefully be able to try and get most, if not all, of the upholstery done for the rear section. I don't think I'm going to have enough foam to do the front section as well, so I might have to order a second mattress for that. We'll see how we get on, though. So, first things first, I'm going to go and get that mattress out of the house, get a nice sharp knife out as well, take some measurements, start cutting the foam down to shape, and then we'll start on the upholstery and see what it looks like by the end of the episode. So, let's get cracked on. Right guys, so excuse any mess in the background, but this is the foam mattress that I've just stripped away from all of the uh, mattress covers that come with it when it's a brand new mattress, obviously. So now I'm just going to take some measurements, put some drawings down where they need to be cut down, and I'll take a sharp bread knife, cut all the way through the foam into the sections that I need. Then once they're all cut down, we can then get the sewing machine out, start on the upholstery, and get some of the cushions all sewed together. So first things first, let's get some measurements made on this mattress, get some slices made into it and get all of the cushions cut down to shape and size as needed.
Right guys, so you just see me cutting up all the foam and in the meantime, off camera, I've been out and bought some upholstery fabric, cracked on and got all of the cushions for this rear section fully upholstered now. So that's all of the cushions done. Now I didn't bother filming this upholstery because to be honest, I didn't know how interested you guys would be in watching me sew some box cushions together. But I do still have some upholstery left to do. I've still got to do the sofa bed at the front. So if you do want to see how I do the box upholstery, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll probably skip over it again next time as well. Just because at the end of the day, it's a bit of sewing of upholstery. So as I say, I just don't know how interested you guys are in seeing this type of thing getting put together. So if you do want to see some of the upholstery that I am doing, let me know in the comments below. And I'll be sure to include it in one of the next sections where I'm going to be doing the front section as well. But at least now all of this rear sofa bed section is now fully upholstered with all the foam cut to shape as well. So that's this sofa bed area pretty much almost complete now. So now all that's done, I can now finally start on the sofa, uh, on the front seats up front. I've had a bit of a rigmarole with these because I ordered some really, really excellent condition seats. These are out of a BMW E46. No rips or tears or anything on these seats. They're almost perfect condition. And then when I arrived, I saw that the seller had actually removed the electronic control modules from under each seat. And obviously without the control modules, you're pushing forwards and backwards and the seats don't know what to do with those controls. So all in, these cost me about £250 delivered and they're totally useless. So I've got a complaint raised with eBay and PayPal at the moment on this because they were described in working condition. And obviously they're not, or not as they are at the moment anyway. So I went out and bought another identical set. These aren't quite in as good condition. They're still in very good condition, but these are practically almost brand new, these two seats. So I'd still like to try and use these if I can. So I bought a set of identical seats. So with these, I'm going to try and take the control units out of these, fit them back into these seats. If they work, then I'll use these. If not, I'll fit them back into these and use these seats instead. But either way, the next job in this episode is going to be getting some seats fitted in. So off camera, I might try and swap some of the control modules over just to see which set I'm going to be using. Then I'll pick it back up when we're ready to start mounting these seats in. And I do have a fast swivel base for the passenger side as well. So the passenger seat should be able to twist all the way around and face the rear of the van. So, as I say, I'm going to do some little electronic investigations off camera, see what exactly needs doing to each seat. I'll pick it back up when they're ready to get fitted, and hopefully by the end of this episode, we'll have some fully fitted BMW front driver seats, as well as a fully upholstered rear sofa bed section as well. So, let's get cracked on. I'll pick it back up in a second when I'm ready to get some seats fitted in. Right, so I've been busy off camera. I've tested out the second set of seats that arrived with the control units. They worked fine. So I've then removed the control units and put the units into the seats that arrived without the control units, but of which are in better condition in general. Just because these ones, as I say, it's got a rip on the driver's bolster. Down there, as you can see, it's uh, it could be repaired, it could be sewed up and uh, recolored. But as you can see, this one has no rips, no tears or anything like that. So I might as well use the best condition seats I can. And I've tested it with a battery after uh, connecting up the control unit boxes as well. So the seats are now finally moving backwards, forwards as they should have when they first arrived. So now they're all sorted out, I can now get them mounted up into the bases. So I'll get the driver's seat in first. Then the swivel base will directly bolt to the base itself. And there'll be a couple of mods just to get the seat mounted to the swivel on the passenger as well. So let's get these seats in, now they're tested and working. Get them mounted and see what they'll look like when they're all fitted in.
Right guys, so that is both of the front BMW seats fully fitted now with all of the electrics tested and working and the passenger is on the swivel base as well. So if I just put the hot wires on just to move the seat forward a bit you can see it's moving forward nicely and then when it's forward it should swivel round without any problems so then it'll face the back as well. So as you can see when that's fully swivelled round that'll face back into the rear area as well. So I'm quite happy and pleased with how those have been fitted in as well. The only thing left to do now is to actually get that battery fitted into the main engine bay because that's the replacement starter battery I have that I've just been using to test the electrics just to be sure that everything's working. I've already got the cables ran through across into where that control unit is so I can turn the seats on and off as and when needed as well. But at least they're both fitted in now with the swivel base and with the electrics fully tested as well. So as I say I'm happy and pleased with how these are turning out and how they're looking. Really nice, really smart looking seats as well. So that's not a bad day's work. So there were a couple more little jobs for today and then we'll call it and pick it back up again tomorrow. But as I say there's a little bit more time so I'm just going to do a bit more tidying up things like that but that's the seats in tested working and swiveling around as well so good progress let's get, uh, get cracked on with a couple more jobs right guys so it's the following day and as you've just seen I've fitted in both BMW seats in yesterday the drivers and the passenger seat with the passenger seat on a fast swivel base so that seat can twist around and face into the rear conversion area as well so that was a good day's work yesterday and now they're in, we're really starting to scrape the barrel of jobs left to do inside the conversion. I've got a little to-do list up there that I've scribbled down some jobs on and they're slowly starting to get ticked off as well. But as I say, with the rear upholstery in and with the front driver seats in as well, it's really starting to look a lot more complete now. So today, first things first, I'm actually going to gut and clear out everything inside the vehicle. All the tools that aren't needed anymore any spare bits that haven't been fitted or don't need to be fitted things like that I'm just going to get everything fully cleared out all of the overhead locker everything all the tools all my adhesives cables things like that get it all out and give everything a good clean down and then we'll be able to see exactly what else we can get done for today I know I'm going to still be able to get some of the trim adhered to for example the edge of the shower door there around some more of the cupboards and the sofa bed they all just need a little bit of trim applying to them so I'll be able to get those done and then I might be able to get underneath the vehicle itself and start tidying up some of the waste piping and some of the water piping because at the moment they're just all loose underneath the flooring. So I'll be able to get under there and secure them up to the flooring underneath as well. So there's still a few jobs I can definitely get cracked on with today but as I say first things first I'm just going to gut everything out of here. All my tools, all my spare parts, things like that. Get it fully emptied, fully cleared out and give it a nice clean down as well. Once that's done, as I say, I'll then pick it back up and see what other jobs we can get done for the day, including, as I say, a bit of trim, tidying up some of the pipe work underneath the vehicle, things like that. So, as I say, I'm going to get it all gutted out and cleared out, and then we'll pick it back up when I'm ready to do a few more jobs. Right, so I've had a good clear and tidy out. That's pretty much everything gutted out from the vehicle that I need out at the moment. So now I'm going to crack on, do a few more bits off the to-do list. One of the first things I'm going to do is mount the whirly vent covers over the top in the rear living area around the sofa bed area. The whirly vents above give nice ventilation going through. And obviously these covers will go on in case it's a really windy day and you can close off the vents completely. So these just need screwing up. And then once they're up, I'm then going to start cutting down some more of the trim and applying some of the trim around some of the sofa bed, around the uh, shower wall, things like that as well. So I'm going to crack on, get those vents in place, get some trim cut down, get that adhered to, and see what else we can do for the day.
Right guys, that'll do it for this week's episode. And see I've got both of the seats mounted in the front for the driver and the passenger seat with the passenger on the fast swivel base. And then today I've gone through, I've attached a lot of trim around little places that needed it, a little tidying up trim around the bed section, under the overhead lockers, things like that. A little bit around the sofa bed at the front section as well. And without recording it, I've also been underneath and I've fed a few of the waste pipes going across to the waste uh, water tank. But I need to get a couple of connectors to be able to get the hoses connected up to the tank itself. And see, so I've also done a bit of cabling uh, underneath the van, but I didn't record it because it doesn't really come out very well because it's very dark under the van. So I've just cracked on and uh, carried on as it was anyway. But as I say, that's not a bad weekend's work really. I say off camera, I've got all the upholstery done as well. And if you want to see me doing the upholstery for the final couple of cushions in the sofa bed area, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise I might just gloss over it like I did with these ones because I just don't know how interested you guys are in, in seeing me do some upholstery. So if you want to see this in the next video, let me know in the description below. Otherwise, as I say, I might just gloss over it like I did with those ones. But there's still plenty more jobs still to be doing. As you can see, the to-do list is starting to get ticked off, but there's still quite a few jobs left. So next week's episode, I'm going to be probably wiring up part of the diesel heater. Probably doing the little bit of upholstery there as well. A few other bits and bobs, a bit of plumbing, a bit more 240 volt hookup, because I've still got to get the kick plate in under that uh, work area as well. And that's also going to have a 240 socket in as well. So still plenty more jobs still to be taken on with. So, as I say, if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button. Pop back next week just to see how progress is coming along as we're getting towards the final finishing stages towards this com uh, camper van conversion. So, thanks for watching this week's episode. If you made it through to the end, consider giving it a good old thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below as well. Totally free to do. You can always unsubscribe later on as well. And hopefully, I'll see you on next week's episode of this Mercedes minibus camper van conversion. Thanks for watching. Cheers.